Well, hello and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter and I live in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, it's the middle of January and it's like summer here today. It's glorious. Anyway, I live on a wooden boat, which I am restoring while I live aboard, which is no small project. So if that's the kind of thing you might be interested in, please stick around and consider subscribing. In this episode, we're going to carry on uh, in the cockpit, redoing the work that I never really finished last year. <coughs> Right then, while the boat is back in shop mode, I can tell you I'm loving it, but it also creates a certain degree of stress because it was pretty comfortable living in here before, and now I basically have a relatively comfortable bedroom and a relatively gnarly little office space. But I can get my work done and I can shower, and everything is great. Um, this is great, but I want to get some stuff built. So I'm carrying on outside in the cockpit. So let's go have a look at what I'm up to. All right then, super excited. Time to finally get all this old uh, um, tongue oil off of here and start to clean this up. I'll have a perfect day for it. It's middle of the January and it's pretty much a summer day out here. I uh, kind of wish I could just take the canopy down, but I think I'll just carry on and get some of this done. Trusty scrapers. I'm sure you've seen plenty of that. You know, I'm actually very pleased to be able to say that there's much less failure here than I thought. Basically, I had two seams fail miserably side by side. It's as if maybe this plank. Anyway, I don't know. Um, I'm really, really impressed. There actually doesn't seem to be much other failure. I can't pull the sealant away from the wood in any other location. Well, I've got the rest of the bulkhead to do, but okay, well that's gonna save me a bunch of time. Um, what I may do, because uh, this wood is probably still a bit damp, um, I may uh, sand it and let it sit open for a couple of days, make sure that the uh, shelter is as waterproof as possible, and really dry these out and see if they shrink some more and pull apart anywhere. But, um, on the whole, I'm relatively pleased, actually. Okay, well, let me carry on investigating. Cheers. So I've removed the, um, basically, the front panels of the thwarts. I don't know what you want to call them, the lockers, etc. Because I'll refinish them inside. A lot simpler to do that on the bench. Okay, so I'm getting geared up to um, drill um, all of this for screws and then bungs, and but I want to do this neatly because this is going to be a line of bungs, probably one, two, three, four, and I'd like them to be really straight and really tidy. So what I'm going to do is obviously the horizontal line is pretty easy to draw. The vertical lines, yeah, I, I have to basically measure from the gap at each time. So what I'm going to do, I'm making this little block. Um, which is this is sort of a proof of concept and i'm going to route out the back actually i'm just going to use the table saw to make a little notch so i get a little slot in it so that i can just slide it down in the v-groove and uh, use that to mark off um, consistently where i'm going to do this because i have a lot of this material to do obviously both the you know all the back and the and the uh, two benches so we're going to play with this a little bit and see if it makes any sense so what I'm going to do is just basically run this through here and cut a little bit off um, both sides of this, leaving a little bit of material in the middle, and I'll just keep experimenting with how much until it glides nicely in the um, V-groove outside. Of course, this is really pusher stick work. <laughs> a little too close for the fingers. Let's see how this goes. Alright, well I didn't take you out for the tour, but that fit perfectly in the groove. Now I want to widen it a bit because that's not a very deep uh, chamfer, so basically I'm just going to move this over a bit, take a little bit more off, and, uh, whoop, that's a lot more off, and uh, see how this works. Okay, so if you look really closely, I've made two cuts, uh, basically, uh, it's hard to tell whether you can see it or not, but basically to create a bit of a step 
create sort of the simulation of a chamfer to sit in the chamfer. But I think I'll actually go a little more elegant and actually set the blade over at 45 because it sits in relatively well, but I'd like it to really sit in snug. So I'm going to play a little more here. All right, let's try that. I like it. Got to go try it. All right, so that worked really well. I can basically, once I have my horizontal lines, I just set this in there and I'll just make a mark both sides and that will make the marks for the two screws that I'm going to put in each plank. Sorry about the plane. Okay, so I've got my horizontal spacing figured out with the uh, little guide block, but now vertically, where am I going to put these runs? Um, I know I need screws here. I know I need screws there. Uh, I could probably get away with just screws at the top and this would hold together fairly well. But I think what I'll do is put four rows of screws 16 inches apart, so we're not quite there, but up an inch. Up an inch from the bottom, up an inch from here, an inch and a half maybe. And then at 32, right across here, and the top one ends up being 48 right at the top of the planks. Which means, I don't know if I have to tip you up to see what I'm talking about here. Uh, the last row would be right at the top of the planks, which means they'd be covered up by the brow piece that I'll put on here eventually. And it's kind of nice to have rows of plugs, but it seems strange to intentionally expose the row of plugs. Plus the top one, would I have made it straight or would I have made it follow the curve of the deck? And if I hide them, I don't have to think about it. So done! Three rows of exposed plugs and one row of hidden plugs. I'll have to decide whether or not I even plug them when they're up there and they're hidden. The sealant is... Anyway, probably plugs, just to be sure they're protected. Okay, so let's get on with some measurements. Inch and a half, and then 16 plus an inch and a half. And then the top one is basically right at the top of the board. So, project these out with the square. Again, on a boat, what is horizontal or square to anything? I'm doing all this work before I um, finish sand these so that it'll sand off all my pencil marks and I'll be able to sand the plugs all at the same time. Don't worry, I'm not actually using it as a level, I'm just using it to project this line over. Now it's time to take my little marker, mark both sides. I can see exactly where I'm going to go. I'm liking this. Okay, so marking out on the transom is pretty straightforward. The planks are actually slightly closer together because there's no caulking joint, Oop, sealant joint. Um, so I <laughs> trimmed this a little bit closer but overdid it slightly so a couple of pieces of tape make it just perfect. Anyway, so vertically it's pretty straightforward because it just has to line up with the structure that's behind it. So let's get to it. part I actually really hate. I have grilled hundreds of thousands of counterbores over the years with about 15 different types of counterbore bits. I've never actually found one that is absolutely brilliant. I'm working with DeWalt today because they're locally available and they're relatively good. Now, if you have a favorite brand of counterbore bit, please let me know. These are really not that bad relatively available and the most important thing for me i don't know if you can see is that the adjustment is with an allen key a little hex uh, set screw rather than a flat headed screw which can drive you nuts while you're trying to get stuff done in there so this is a number six for number six stainless steel screws which i'm going to use to screw this in and uh, then bung it now i find the very best of these last about a couple of hundred holes uh, depends on the wood you're using of course um, but again, if you guys know of a really great quality set of counterbores, I'm in. Let's, uh, let's get going. Seems pretty good. Yes, I'll power drive these eventually. Oh, I like it. You can see I've counterboard that maybe even a hair too far. This is 3 eighths material and I'm putting uh, three quarter screws in. So I was counting on about 
mm, half of that, three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch bite in the mahogany and the rest in the, in the plywood behind. And maybe I bored that just a bit deep, but boy, it sure pulled in nice. And that gives me plenty of depth for my bung. Now, the trick is I'm using tapered bungs made by, um, I'm making them myself. Uh, I think you'll probably see that in this episode. Um, I cut them myself with a drill press with a bung cutter, plug cutter, uh, from Lee Valley here in Canada that makes a really nice one because it's tapered and it's slightly chamfered at the end so it's super easy to get them in. Um, but because of the taper, I have to be careful I'm drilling these deep enough. I wish I had a bung or two with me right now to see how they fit. In fact, I may not even do this today because I'd really rather have the bungs in my hand to test fit before I go too far with this. Right? Yeah, good idea. I don't know if you can hear me, it's pouring rain. I just actually, I love working under a canopy in the rain. I love it, no problem. Um, warm today, super nice. So I've gone about as far as I can go. Um, got these all marked off. And uh, I think probably I won't do any drilling today because as I said, I wanna make sure I have the bungs and I'm going to make bungs tomorrow. There are two uh, shop tools I do not have aboard and that is a drill press and a thickness planer. And uh, both of which you need very rarely, but when you need them, you really need them. Fortunately, I have a buddy nearby who does. All right, then if I'm not getting any more work done on the planking out here, I have to stay productive. So we're going to do something slightly controversial, although super important. And to get started, we have to jump back in time. Pretty excited about this. This will be one of my first, if only, have I done an unboxing before? In this box is not a 22 inch touchscreen monitor. Inside this box is something I've been looking at for two years, or not looking at, looking for for about two years, and I absolutely have to have. So, um, let's see. For those of you who've been following along, you might remember that this boat had a rather unusual steering system. Um, kind of a drive shaft all the way along the side with a bunch of U-joints and pillow blocks and stuff like that. And well, it was had to go because it was all ratty. And I thought it was going to switch to um, hydraulic until I looked into what it would cost. And then I looked into how you get drift. In other words, the steering wheel isn't always pointing in the same direction because anyway, whatever. So I'm going to go to cable and chain. But what I need for that is a quadrant. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is my new quadrant. Now you might say, well, that's an awfully big quadrant. Well, I want an awfully big quadrant. But what I really needed was a quadrant with a square one inch hole shaft, which very rare. Uh, and that's what I need and that's what this is. And I needed something under 10 and a quarter inches. And until I get the tape measure out, I won't know, but this is supposed to be 10 inches, which is great. Now here comes the part no one's really gonna like. I only need this much of it. This quadrant's for a sailboat where the cables would go off in different directions. I gotta think about that. But I just needed the cable to go straight across the middle. I only need 90 degrees of travel, which means I only need the quadrant from here to here. In fact, I can't use this because it'll bump into the transom at the back. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it right here and right there. And I apologize if that's gonna make someone cry. It is bronze. It is beautiful. It came from Texas. It'll live a long and happy life. So yeah, isn't it a beaut? Oh, beautiful, big cast bronze quadrant. Uh, as I may have mentioned in the jump back in time, I was looking for one of these for about two years and finally found one in Texas, which I may have mentioned. Unfortunately, it's at 200 and... There's the Coho, one of my favorite boats on its way to Port Angeles in Washington State. Um, unfortunately, it's a 270 degree quadrant and I only need a 90 degree quadrant and I'll show you why in a second, which means I'm gonna be cutting this up a little bit, which some may find sacrilegious, but I think of it that it may not have had another life and this quadrant is gonna go around the world with me. So I think it's actually pretty fortunate that uh, I was able to find it and put it to good use. The main reason that this one is super valuable to me, ah, it's getting heavy, is that if you look, it has a square um, socket and clamp in the middle and my rudder shaft is square, uh, as well as the diameter will just barely fit with actually a little bit of trimming on some structure for the transom. But hey, let's get to that. Okay, if we lift up this temporary panel here that I had, trying to do this all with one hand, Tip that over that one bit. All right, we can peer down into here. Okay, there's the rudder stock or rudder shaft, or I don't really know what you call it. 
Um, as you can see, it's a square shaft. A little further down, it is round and it's one inch in diameter and an inch, actually I can't remember, no, it's one across the flats. I forget what it is actually on the shaft. I considered finding a way to have this machined and put a keyway in so I could use a round one, but actually once I found a square one, I was thrilled. And um, one other thing that I'm gonna do that's different is as you can see, I have a tank right here and I designed it so that the quadrant would sit on backwards, uh, which meant I had a space limitation. And that space limitation is set by this timber right here. Now this, uh, <laughs> a lot of Bodies are gonna be having a problem with me right now because this is not an incredibly structural timber because it only goes up to the doorway. These are much more significant because they actually give strength to the transom. However, if you look carefully, you can see that the inner planking, I don't know if there's a place you can see it better, over here maybe. The inner planking on the transom is set diagonally. Another plane, hang on. Okay, as I was saying, the transom is actually made of two layers of planking. Um, the inner one is set diagonally and the outer one, which has got the mahogany that you see, is horizontally. Uh, that makes it incredibly strong, it's wonderful. Now, they set it up that is diagonal down to the center and on this side down to the center. So in fact, this timber is like a splice piece. It's a uh, bearing block. I don't know what you want to call it, butt block, so to speak. In other words, the two sets of mitered um, inner planking meet on this block, which makes it relatively significant for the structure of the uh, transom. So I feel this is two, two and a half inches deep. Lots of meat there. I feel as long as I don't take too much out of this, I'm gonna have to cut a little slot in it for the uh, quadrant. Um, it's not too much of a sin. I am going to rebuild this transom in the not too distant future and at that point I'll probably do things a little bit differently, but in the meantime I don't want to make it vulnerable. So let's see how much I have to trim. <coughs> yep, as I suspected uh, when I measured it before I bought the quadrant online and uh, the basic measurements that they were able to give me online was the diameter which I was able to calculate back from the point. So it actually fits beautifully, but yes, I have to take out all but three quarters of an inch of this block to get that to work properly. And I'm not feeling too bad about that. I, can, I know that I can rebuild that in time to be as strong as it is now. And I really didn't have many options. I wasn't gonna find another quadrant that was slightly smaller. In fact, the bigger the quadrant, the better, because I get better mechanical advantage against it. So I'm really very pleased. Now just to get the trim cut out and more significantly to cut this here and somewhere here I haven't decided exactly how on both sides yuck but cool but a little bit yuck all right well as I mentioned there's a couple of shop tools that I don't have on the boat and one is a thickness planer and the other is a drill press both I need for the upcoming project thankfully my good friend Brian does here uh, in his funky indoor outdoor shop will take you up so yeah, gotta love his indoor outdoor shop. Works perfectly, especially on a summer day. It's just cool to be out here. Anyway, um, so thickness planer down there. Uh, drill press right here. Let's uh, start cutting some plugs. And um, the thickness planer I'm gonna use to dress down some three quarter inch plank mahogany to half inch for the uh, three fold foot fold companionway uh, hatch, which I'll show you. So I set up a little fence here just to make it easier to whip this wood through. Bing, 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 bing. And then I can do both sides. All right, so should we do a little? Okay, well, you may have noticed that the last few, well, more than the last few, uh, start to smoke pretty bad. Um, bits getting fairly dull. Now, 
what I'm curious is whether or not if the outside of the plug is a bit burned and a bit dark, whether you're going to see a dark ring um, when they're put in. Uh, we'll see. When I think of all the plugs I've cut in my life, I can't really remember if I've ever had that problem before. Now, I used to pop plugs out with a little screwdriver. It goes pretty quick. Um, but every once in a while, I'd actually find that I put a little dent in the side of one of the plugs that right where it sat in the bung, right in the hole. And um, so I don't do it that way anymore. I have a different technique and I'll show you. So what I do is I just run it to a table saw and I slice off just at the back edge of where the bungs are cut and the bungs just all fall out plugs and I put them away. 